The observer would like to advise that the following video comes with a trigger warning. The content in this video is of a sensitive nature, so please beware that the topic of this video may trigger you. The observer recommends that you consider your own mental health before you watch this video. Up. So I imagine with all of the work, our zero and more physiology gentleman can answer you some questions. Um, I, I thought she might just be a little bit devastated for a minute, but she still hasn't come back. We don't know her family faith. She's under a fake account on here she, and has a fake picture um, for her own protection. And she's got, I think her uh, Insta's under something like Rusty Spoons. So I can't really find anyone from that. <laughs> Any updates on Liam? Um, you left me, did you, did you go and see the naked DJ? Um, he was very hairy, wasn't he, Lisa? It's because you don't answer my messages anymore. I got pissed off, so I sent it to you. Um, Liam, update. So, obviously, X have really, X, three people on X have released a picture of Liam's full body dead on the floor, um, which, obviously, I saw while I was literally trying to report it today because everyone said it last night, and they are horrific pictures. They're pictures his son and family don't need to see. Um, it's, um... I don't know why people do that. I just don't understand why they've done it. Um, and, you know, you can see the blood around his head. It's just, it's horrible. Like, it's horrible. Um, his broken body on the concrete. I don't understand that. So I did a video about that earlier. Um, the police in Argentina now say that they can trace the, dr the drugs back to two workers at the hotel, one who was a cleaner and one who worked in a different part of staff. Um, they say that... So the day before Liam... Um, was found dead he passed a drug test he passed a drug test he had nothing in his system um, and he had to do that as part of his ability to get back to you know his um, documentation for America um, so he passed a full drug test as soon as he got back to um, this hotel in Argentina the, the, the this uh, hotel um, kind of preyed upon him knowing that he had addiction problems Within kind of an hour or so, he had bought up quite a large quantity, we believe, of a drug called Crystal that is um, particularly prevalent in, in Argentina. It's a drug that is a hallucinogenic drug, um, which does cause um, psychotic breaks. And it seems as though they actually brought it up to his hotel room on a cleaning cart disguised in a Dove soap box, um, which is why we saw the Dove soap box on the table. Now... What I would say, because the police said, oh, the hotel are actually dealing with these members of staff as well and they're going to be sacked. They don't need to be sacked, they need to be in prison. Um, I do believe that the reason he was taken back to his room so many times and shut away is because the same staff members realised that if the police come, it would highlight the fact they'd sold, they'd sold him illegal drugs. The drugs that they bought came from 15 miles away from the hotel in a run-down area in Argentina, like a low-income area. Um, so we don't even know how good those drugs were, how clean they were, what they were mixed with. And obviously, they have give them to him. He has taken a large quality. You could see from the amount of foil on the table um, that he had, he had binged. And what I would say is, if you're a drug addict... Um, and you are on the wagon and you actually stop taking drugs because I've done it myself where I've stopped taking speed or whatever and I've stopped for, for years and then when you go to buy it again because you're having a, a relapse you buy the same amount that you're used to taking because you think that's not going to get me high like I need this and you've actually had this really long period like he had off drugs like he was 100 day clean or something um, so it would appear like he's done a lot and he's had psychotic breaks I still, to, I still to this moment in time do not agree with that he commits suicide. Like, I don't think he did. He um, he wasn't in a fit state of mind or, like, copus mentis enough to make a decision, a clear decision to do that. To me, it seems like he panicked. He had been locked in a hotel room. He had been convulsing just minutes before. Um, and he rushed out onto, onto the balcony with really tragic circumstances. If anyone saw the video that was put out, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Liam's dad went to the hotel and went up to the third floor and was trying to see how he would fall over the balcony and he was leaning against the balcony like with his head backwards and it only came up to like the bottom of his dad's back. So Liam was taller than his dad, so it'd be, it could be possible for him to like run at the balcony, do something like half pass out. The one thing that worries me 
is there was a male scream heard about a minute before Liam fell. And we know from the autopsy that Liam was either unconscious or partially unconscious when he fell. So that makes me think, was he put over the balcony or did something happen where he was looking over the bal balcony and he passed out? Like maybe the blood ran to his head or something because he had a whiskey bottle in one hand and a phone and a lighter on him. So did he kind of hear the police sirens and kind of go like this to look over and kind of fell? Um, we just don't know. But I really hope that the hotel staff are held accountable for this. And the hotel is also held accountable as a whole. Um, it was before he fell, Mitch, that the scream was heard. That how they, they should, I imagine there is CCTV because we know there's CCTV of him being led back to his room. So there must be some. It's so tragic. It's heartbreaking. But the... Um, the, tr the like the truth in human nature really comes out when things like this happen and, and the amount of like horrendous videos I've seen and the horrible videos and the things that people are making jokes about and the horrendous things people are saying so the two women who were last seen with him in his room were believed to be sex workers um, paid sex workers and that's why he was arguing with one woman down in the bal um, in the lobby about payment that's what that's what reports are saying I don't know how he fell onto his back um, it's just tragic. I think it's going to take him between 10 and 14 days for his family to um, get his body back to the UK due to they won't release him properly until all the toxicology reports are back in. Um, so, Emily the Painter, because it, it's all there to see, Emily. You only, have to, you only have to research. It's not anything that I've gone over there to find out or I've not got any secret information. I just research and put all the information together in a way that makes sense. We don't have any kind of um, word yet on whether he fell or he jumped. Um, different reports are saying different things. TMZ have put out, um, no, Perez Hilton has put out a thing saying, yeah, he definitely jumped, but that's not been confirmed anyway. The autopsy said he was unconscious or half unconscious when he fell, partially. Um, so we just don't know. Where's this one? I don't know. I just don't know. We can't really confirm a lot. I'm just literally w w looking for what the actual authorities are saying because I think that's the closest we're going to get to the truth. Mm. I don't think he jumped. If I... I'm trying to remember something quickly. Let me just go to my... Who's ringing me now? Who is ringing me? Who is ringing me? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, let me just have a look here. So I was just thinking about what I saw. So from, from the position of the picture taken of Liam dead, it was taken from the ground floor where he was. So it was taken from next to his body. So it wasn't taken from a height or from above. So it was somebody who I've worked at the hotel or was at the hotel who had gone outside and, and looked at looked at Liam and then decided to take a picture. Um, and I, I just don't know why anyone would do that. I don't know why anyone would do that. Um, no defensive positioning. Um, he showed no signs of putting his arms up to to, um, to save his fall at all. Um, Where did I see that thing? The autopsy report was quite, um, he had 25 separate external and internal injuries. Let me just have a look, Liam, pain. So this was six hours ago, so what did it say? So this says he had, oh, okay. So it says here, a partial autopsy found the former One Direction singer who died at 31 <clears throat> had multiple substances in his system. Um, those included pink cocaine, a recreational drug that's typical as a mix of several drugs, including methamphetamine, ketamine, MDMA, and others, as well as cocaine, benzodiazepine, and crack. That is so lethal, man. That's so lethal. Um, it's so lethal. 
He had internal and external bleeding, 25 injuries reported to Payne's body. The report stated that Liam's head injuries were significant to cause death and the, co- the cause of death was related to the, fight, uh, the, the fall. But as of yet, there's no kind of thing. That freaks, <clears throat> that freaks me out so much. Like, the mix of those drugs together would have been out of this world. Like, out of this world. The damage and the, the, the thing that would have done to you quite quickly, um, that is some cocktail, 100%. Like, <clears throat> I can't even... Um, most of the things on those lists I've never taken, but I can't imagine those all mixed together. Like, we know how strong MDMA is. We know how strong ketamine, ketamine is. Then you mix that with cocaine, diazepine, and crack together. Like, that is just out of this world. Um, see, we don't know until the CCTV, did he try to climb over the balcony in order to escape something? Did he fall? Did he trip? Did he, like, literally think... You know, he needed to get out somehow. And every time he went down to the lobby, they rushed him back to his room and he was like, I need to get out of this place. Like, I just need to get out. It's so tragic. Um, I'm just finding it completely heartbreaking. The, the amount of, you know, people sharing pictures of his broken body on the floor and shit like that. Like, this is this is so... <laughs> there's, no, there's no fucking need for it. And it's, it's just like, it's, you know, no parent, no kid, I mean, no ba- like kid, he's seven now. No kid at 18 wants to search their dad's name and see a picture of their dad broken on the floor with his head covered in blood. They, they just, they, there's just no need for it. And we know now that it's been on the internet, it will always be on the internet. Um, it's just, it's gross. So they believe Happy Life that he got it from two hotel, two hotel workers. One was a um, cleaner and one was another worker at the hotel and they actually bought the drugs to Liam in a... Um, in a Dove soapbox. No, I don't think it's related to Lee at all, personally. And I can't say it's not definitely, but I don't see any connections to it right now. <clears throat> Uppers and downers all mixed together, Tracy. And what a lot of those drugs are hallucinogenic if taken in large amounts, like MDMA. Um, if the pictures have been taken down, don't think for a second that there's not been a million people who've screenshotted them who will reshare them. It'll come out at a later date. Thank you, Andrea. It'll be on loads of different websites. Um, it'll be shared in WhatsApp messages backwards and forwards between people. Like once you put something out there, it's there for good. He must have been so scared. Like, for, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Claire. For people to prey on a man who is absolutely um, on his road to recovery. Um, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. You've seen them on here as well, Sweepsy, have you really? They'll get taken down quite quickly on here. Thank you, Becky, Becky Daisy. Because if I, sometimes if I share a picture and it's got even a little bit of blood in my video gets taken down. Um, I've shared a couple of things before that have been taken down. They say because of graphic content and it really hasn't been graphic, uh, but I would never share a dead body or anything like that on here. Um, but that, um, thank you, Amanda, that, that mix of drugs is enough that he very well could have jumped from there believing he'd land on his feet. Do you know what I mean? Like the hallucinogenics and the absolute thing. He might have just been in a panic situation. I need to get out of this situation. Um, oh, yeah, I am... Um, my people in here last night said it was on X, so I was like, I'm going to go and have a look if it's on there so I can report it. And it came up straight away um, on three separate profiles. One of them had already been taken down and there was on two more. Um... There was, there's CCTV, right, that someone's sharing on X and it's spreading like wildfire that people are saying it's Liam falling and it isn't. It's not even the same um, property. It's not even the same hotel. Thank you for the ghost, um, Mary. It's not the same building. So they've got like a man jumping out of a window and like hitting the wall loads of times before falling on the floor. Um, but it's not the same building or the same balcony, but people just share it. There's a woman on here sharing a video of what she says is Liam in the ambulance with like a um, respirator over his face with his being his heart being pumped but it's not Liam um, but because of all the masks and stuff it's really I was looking at it for a while thinking is that Liam um, but it's just the place is on fire as well what place oh the place what the man from the one the um what's X it's um Twitter it's now X isn't it this is why we need you I literally um I just um Ali Carter, I mean, I, I, I'm going to look into that. I've been really busy today, but I will at some point. Thank you, Gem. I, we did look at a bit the other night, the Ali Carter one. I know Observer's got my three-part Diddy Live on her channel on YouTube. Yeah, it's just um, it's just heartbreaking. Eve Red Light in. Oh, yeah, Devin, I was trying to get you into my knocking shop. Um, <laughs> thank you, Amanda. 
Devon Dance is like my nan, everyone. I don't think Lee meant to fall. I don't think he meant to fall. I think it's a, when we when we talk about the um, the the mixture of drugs that we just heard that he's that were in his system. Like there is there is no question in my mind that he was having some kind of break. Thank you, Julie. I just hope that he was unconscious when he fell. So they say that um, plim the preliminary toxicology reports say that he'd taken a mixture. Um, no, nay, so I didn't do the Sarah Sharif live today because they weren't in court today. Jagger right, let's confess she was part of the parties. She's always said that she went to a few of the parties and she tried to save people. Um, can you go live with Peter Nygaard? Who is that, Natalie? Who's Peter Nygaard? Sorry, guys, I'm just vaping for a little second. Support for... There's a petition on change to ensure support for artists. What kind of artists? I think it was an accident as well, to be fair. Well, when did she put that out, Positive Vibes? Oh, right, okay. Well, the ones who've been abused. Or am I making something wrong? Um, I hope people are brave enough to start coming forward and saying what their part was. Because if they were part of something where they've been abused and they've got caught up in something, the only thing that has any kind of forgiveness in it is to come out and start talking about your part in what you've done. And like, Sophie shared a video of me earlier, which I thought was really, really um, insightful that came from the Piers Morgan footage talking about Diddy, um, where Candace Owens said about Le LeBron James and like, you want to talk on Black Lives Matter, you you know you you didn't you know you didn't you you didn't want to do the kneel you didn't want to do all these different things but then when one of your friends is involved in the most like brutal of of rape scandals you just want to sit down and say nothing like it's you know people need to start talking. Um, one minute I'll tell you where she said it. Oh, your eyes will pop when you hear it. Positive vibes. If it's on TikTok, tag me in it. Tag me in it so we can have a look. Um, the hotel needs to be done for manslaughter because what's happened here is absolutely disgusting. They've obviously, because it's a, like a really like expensive hotel, they obviously these workers are constantly um, preying on people that come into the hotel. Thank you, Jess. And for an addict, a recovering addict like Liam, it would have just taken one bad phone call, something he was upset with. We heard he was in the lobby smashing up his computer because he got a horrendous email. We know he'd been dropped by his music label. We know he'd been dropped by his management all in the last couple of weeks. We know his ex-girlfriend was making claims. He was in a really bad place. And then someone comes along and says, take this, take this, take this. He's going to do it. He's on a foreign country by himself. It was a mixture that was always going to go wrong. 100% Kelly and that's what I said in my video if the hotel had done the right things he could still be here right now he would be put back into some kind of rehab but he would be alive and they didn't and loads of people in my video were like oh you can't blame the hotel how dare you blame the hotel and they had no they, they just they don't have any um they don't owe him nothing and I'm like they owe him everything he was paying to stay there as a guest and he had the right not to be, you know, peddled sex workers and drugs and literally put back in his room when he was convulsing on the floor, belatedly in a state of panic and needing help, crisis. And you just left him. Do you know what I mean? You even phoned the actual, the services, the medical service and said, oh, we're really worried he's gonna hurt himself. He's in a room, a really high room in the balcony. And that's exactly what ended up happening to him. So you knew already what was gonna happen. There's 100% the duty of care. I think everyone has a duty of care, right? So if I if I go outside my house now and there's someone passed out on the floor from drugs and they're convulsing, I have a duty of care to do something. Like, I always say do something. If you see something, say something, do something. I'm not just going to go, oh, he's taking drugs, I'll leave him there to die. And he's in your hotel paying as a guest. It's, of course it's your job to do something. Anyone like, saying the hotel don't have a duty, you're off your head. Oh, I've got so many messages in my gift card. Um, why did they not go into the room? They just kept... Right, so they kept... Um, where did you send it to me? What, on you? It was on YouTube. Um, it's, um, it's absolutely, like, it's, it's disgusting, like, like, what happened. But they kept... Right, so they kept... Hey, Esla. They kept putting him back in his hotel, right? 
and when they phoned the services they said his hotel room has got substances it's got alcohol like they knew about the foil they knew about the drugs they knew about all of the reasons why he was in the state he was in and they still just kept taking him back even if they had to hold him down in the lobby well they phoned an ambulance that's what they should have done because I'd much rather be in trouble for restraining someone having some kind of fit on the floor than I would for someone dead and a son, a seven-year-old boy without a father. You saw something different. 100% liable. Evening, Jacqueline. Hello, everyone coming in. Thank you for all the heart meets, guys, and thank you for the little ghost as well. Who is his manager? So he'd been dropped by his management team a couple of weeks before. That's why I'm thinking, because some people have said he did have, um, like, entourage with him, but for everything I've heard, he didn't. He was on his own in the hotel. Um, and if he did have an entourage, security, or anyone with him, they need to be held responsible as well. Absolutely they do. Thank you, Mary. He's a grown-up. Isn't he responsible? Mary, I would say, you know, we're all responsible for ourselves, right? There comes a certain time, thank you, Mary, when if you're in a state like and you're struggling and you're in a crisis situation, as adults can sometimes get, whether it's drug induced, alcohol induced or mental health induced, we absolutely need help. And that's why sometimes your help, your your family will put you into some kind of facility or you'd get some kind of help or someone would phone an ambulance like you. you, you he wasn't in a state to make his own decisions. Thank you, Dem Dem. Um, I don't know who Roger is. When did, where did Roger leave? Who's Roger? Um, I don't know what kind of relationship he had with his girlfriend. I know they, um, his friend Roger Norris was there. Let me just screenshot that so I can research when I come offline. Um, he was passed out at one point on the floor and he started convulsing as the American guy who was at the wedding actually came out and said, you know, at one point he was convulsing on the floor and they picked him up and carried him back to his room for that last time. So it was only like seven or eight minutes after he was convulsing that he fell off the balcony. Yeah, the friend 100% he's looking at. You don't just watch your friend in that state. Said they would and they would have been in Argentina I 100% believe the police would have been called in Argentina um, if it hadn't been for the fact the hotel knew the drugs had come from the hotel now we know from the leaked whatsapp that other workers at the hotel knew by the time Liam was in a state and coming down to the lobby that he was on drugs that had been provided by the hotel which I absolutely believe that was the reason why they kept returning him to the hotel because once the police had been called they were all fucked so they were thinking, if we just put him back there, hopefully he will be asleep and he'll wake up in the morning, it'll be done and this will all be over with. But right now they just wanted to shut him away and get him get him away from everyone else. So happy birthday, Susie. Um, get him away from everyone else. And it actually the cost of that was his life. Um, do you know what I mean? I absolutely, I absolutely do think they absolutely would prefer that something had happened to him rather than he had been awake to tell the police this is the drugs I've taken and this is who's given it to me. The WhatsApp were like, um, they're available on TikTok. Um, they're between several workers at the hotel um, and they're talking about how one of them has given him drugs, how, you know, it's come from inside the hotel, um, how they're panicking about th what he's doing. So they, they all knew and they knew what drugs he'd taken and they knew the cocktail he was on. The spirit box last night said Roger pushed him. I don't like the spirit boxes, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the spirit boxes to me are a load of noises that then someone tells you it says something that I never hear. Um, so it'll go like, and they'll go, oh, it just said Nanny Jane was in the river. And I'll be like, what? Well, I didn't hear that. Um, and it just always does the same thing. Or it's just like, and they're like, oh, right, okay. Yeah, it said Roger, Roger pushed him. Um, and it's just, it, I don't like it. Um, do you know what I mean? There was there was a woman doing the spirit box during the time Nicola Bully was missing, and she said that. Um, let me just close up the chair. Um, the woman who did the spirit box when Nicola Bully was missing said that she'd been kidnapped, cut into pieces, and she was in three different boxes at the bottom of the river. Uh, well, she wasn't. I just don't know who the fuck was coming through messing with the spirit box. Um, I don't know why Nanny Jane was in the river. Um, I think she was swimming. 
I there, there's got to be a, a posh hotel like that there has to be CCTV and if they say CCTV wasn't working or they didn't have it or it's never been there then this is even more weird cover up and then I'd start asking who pushed him and that's just me being honest if you say there's no CCTV at like one of the best facilities in Argentina and you ain't got nothing to show me from that whole courtyard and a swimming pool as well is there which means you know there's always going to be dangerous things that happen things you need to be able to watch back over I don't believe that Why have I seen some random crap about you? I don't believe it, how silly. Is she sorry? Um, well, who do you mean, James? There's a lot of people that say a lot of things about me. Um, and it's normally because if they use my name in a video, they get lots of views. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are jealous about the community I have on this app and the kind of numbers I get in my lives and the numbers I get on my video. Um, well, said so the CCTV wasn't working at the time for 30 minutes. See what I mean? See what I mean? The CCTV did what broken for a 30 minute period over the time that Liam had been to fall from a balcony. I need to look into that. Um, Rogers, so Roger Norris needs to be questioned by the police. Basically, the police do a full investigation. Yeah, I do believe they will because he's so high profile. Um, I do believe they will. We'll be, um, thank you, Angel. Evening, Gorge. Hiya, Gorge. Um, yeah, it depends. It depends on how high corruption is, whether they don't want people to kind of um, be blaming Argentina, stop kind of travel there. So it just depends, really. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for the ghost, guys. Oh, so Roger Norris, was that the guy whose house he went to look at um, when he's in the Snapchat picture and he's shown you like all the big like things, like the first ever wheel that's been discovered and stuff like that? Is that Roger Norris? Him and his girlfriend went to the house. Oh, True Crime Around the World, James, is a woman um, who has threatened to gang rape children on the app. Uh, she's also said the N-word several times and she goes after several high-profile creators because it gives her content rather than putting something positive out into the um, creator atmosphere. Um, she's a horrible person. There's screen, uh, there's, um, screen recordings all over online of exactly who she is. Um, her name's Leona and she's got a massive track record on this app for doing horrific things. Um, and now I'm her latest one because she thinks if I make videos back about her, she'll get clout off me. Um, and the only thing I've got to say is bun you, Leona, and I'll never make a video about you because you're not on my level. So, yeah. Yeah, she's horrible. Yeah. She's a common one. Um, yeah, anything truth in Liam? I don't know. I don't see any truth in it, to be fair. Thank you, Mary. I don't see any truth um, in the fact that it's related to Diddy, to be fair. I think this is a very tragic accident that came from horrific circumstances um, that just a build up that kind of flashpointed into something horrific. Thank you, Maggie. Magpie. Magpie, sorry. Amazing dogs, nobody said no to them. What's her user? True crime around the world, I think her name is. Uh, she's saying I'm holding lives, blaming Liam for his own death and saying horrific things about him being an addict but I think you've all been in it every Liam Live have done and you know that's never happened um, she also said I shouldn't be covering Liam's case but yet she made about 27 videos about me before um, before making that video saying I shouldn't be talking about it so I just think it's down to the fact that my video has more views probably I don't know if he was locked in his room or not because people have said he was to stop him coming down I don't understand that, Ellie. A couple of people have had problems trying to subscribe. Um, I, I, do, I don't know how to even fix that because I've never had that, so I don't really know. Oh, am I getting hot? Am I getting hot? Right, so we're going to get into some cases anyway. Um, because what do you think about the way he landed? Part of me thinks he would have to have fallen backwards to have landed that way, if I'm honest. Um, because he's landed for anyone who hasn't seen the pictures um, Liam is laying on his back with his legs outstretched to the side almost as if they've been broken they, they're, they're laying very awkwardly his legs um, and his head is back um, and his arms are just naturally by his side um, he had a, a chair had fallen onto his legs but it wasn't a broken chair it was uh, just like it had fallen after he'd fallen um, so to me, I just, um, I've seen it on X. Apparently it's been removed now. So the 
fall I believe was about 40 foot 45 foot um yeah so I'd have fallen if he'd fallen f so I'm, I'm gonna say it like if, if most people who um commit that way fall flame face down um because of the way that you're falling um so the fact that he actually fell and landed on his back um unless he'd fall like this and so 40 foot right it's not that great a height where your body's gonna like keep changing direction um so you're gonna just fall um so it would appear to me that he fell backwards off of the balcony there was no chair said to have been stood against the balcony for him to have been stood on a chair or fallen off a chair so i would i, I am quite um there are disgusting pictures of him hanging over the balcony. See, Courtney, the ones I've seen, I don't think it's Liam in them. I think people are, are releasing old footage and trying to tie it to Liam. They did it in the Jay Slater case. They brought out loads of old footage from, footage from other countries and they were like, look, here's, um, here's, here's Jay Slater being beaten up. This is Jay Slater being chained to somewhere. It was never Jay Slater. Um, so I think people are just sick. Hey, Ella. It was, it was, a low, it was quite a low balcony. I think, um, I don't know where I took the pictures of the balcony where um his dad was kind of doing the experiment i think it might be on this phone i'm on now hang on oh it's here um <laughs> so this is um this is liam's dad i'll just quickly show you liam's dad went to the hotel to have a look for himself about how his son could have fallen um camilla you don't have to be in here dude we're actually talking about it very factually and respectfully and just updating people on liam um because liam actually does matter and obviously people are actually concerned and and people do want to know about it but if you don't want to camilla you're absolutely fine to leave I'm doing other cases tonight and somebody asked me a question. They're not actually my manager. So it's really not that high. So it's really not um it's really not that high. I've always explained to everyone, right, whenever we talk about any kind of case, I will see a case the whole way through. So I'm never just going to tell you something and then just move on. And even if there's an update in 10 years, I will absolutely put that out. Um, what I get fed up of, if it's people don't agree with just one thing I do, they decide to like attack or be rude, all of those things. Like, I don't really work for anyone. I give up all of my time, all the time to research things, to bring you guys the facts, because I know there's so much shit out there about Liam. Um, and there's so much stuff out there you can read, videos you can see which people are saying it's Liam, pictures of him dead on the floor. So I try to go through all of that for you guys so you don't have to and just bring you the truth. And if people don't like that, you can unfollow me, you can leave, um, you don't have to turn up to my lives. But it's just like, I just get feel like I'm put in this kind of pressure zone all the time and people telling me I'm always doing the wrong thing. It just gets, it just gets annoying. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about a couple of cases tonight. Um, and I will, I'm going to look into this CCTV tomorrow and I'm going to look into this guy Roger as well. So when we come live tomorrow, I'll try and have some kind of updates on what I can actually find. Um, you know, it's just one of those things I'll always do it in the right way, like in the most respectful way. And I've, and I've, I've been in addiction before, so I can even give you that side of things where I can like actually uh, talk to you about like kind of what happens and kind of like really see it as like the sadness um, behind this. Thank you. Now, I'm never ever going to be like, well, he was an addict. Um, I just want people to understand that, you know, he was a person and a father. Yeah, we're going to look into Roger a little bit, I think. Why do people get phone with, with, with her numbers? Okay, so we're going to talk about Sarah Boone first. Um, what did someone say? About Robin, I've tried to check in on Lola loads of times since her account got taken down and I'll update people as soon as I can get hold of her, but I just haven't been able to. Um, you know, two people who took Crystal and fell from balcony. Oh my God, Lola, I'm so sorry. Indeed, Ella. Right, so I'm going to, um, yeah, Robin, I'm going to keep checking on her. 
But um, I am worried too because obviously she put out some sensitive videos about Jace later the day. What is going on? Look like Princess Bloody Fiona. Um, What is going on? Look like Princess Bloody Fiona. Um, um, I've tried to get hold of her because I really want to know if she's okay, but I will keep trying. Thank you for the heart, these guys. I want to leave and I'll be doing some more cases afterwards so I just want to because some people haven't heard and to talk about the trial I don't really want to keep updating people like what happened first thank you guys for the ghosts um thank you for helping my target and thank you for the heart meets and team bracelets as well um let me just do a poll am I freezing for everyone or is it just certain people can you put a smiley face if I keep freezing and a crying face if I don't no I'm not Lola Lucy um Lola's been brilliant in the Jay Slater case though uh, so I do keep freezing is it just when I change the picture or all the time thank you Jade well thank you guys for fulfilling my goal oh Jade thank you so much I love them little ghost mum I just want to be free. Oh, God. Let me just reset this so I can come up to the cases. Right, cool. Okay, we're good. We're good to go. And if it keeps freezing for anyone, you might have to just close down the app and come back in because sometimes it will get your phone will get a bit glitchy. Um, I won't change the picture again to the end of the case when I'll go through all of the pictures. Um, Picture of those comments still come in. Hmm. Yeah, if you have to go out, go out and then, hey Jodie. Um, that wasn't even Jodie that came in, it was Kira. She got a similar picture. Okay. Get my notes open for today. Okay. Right, so I'm not going to do a, a massive deep dive on this. I'm just going to give you the basics because we've covered this a few times before. No, nope, shall we just get started? We just had a little talk about Liam, that was it, and um, just kind of catching up on the day, that was all. So February the 24th of 2020, police dispatched to Winters Park in Florida as of, after a frantic phone call from Sarah Boone, who's this woman here, around 1pm, reporting that she and her boyfriend had been playing hide-and-seek the night before in their Winter Park townhouse after indulging in some... Thanks, Prince Blue. Um, indulging in a few glasses of wine and having fun and Sarah had told her boyfriend, Torres, that it'd be funny if he got into a suitcase. Boone reported that she had forgotten he was in the suitcase and gone upstairs where she had fallen asleep till the very next day. Now, upon waking up in the early hours, um, the early afternoon hours, I should say, around 12 p.m., Sarah said she went to search for Torres, who had never made it to their bedroom the previous night, and when her search came up empty-handed, she remembered the game of hide and seek and opened up the suitcase to find his lifeless body inside. His face was purple, his body was purple, and he had blood coming out of his ear and his nose where he'd suffocated to death in the suitcase. Now, the first red flag to investigators was that Sarah had not immediately called authorities upon finding George Torres's body but she had actually first called her ex-husband, Brian, with who she shared a child, and her ex-husband advised her that she had to phone the police to report it. Boone said she did supposedly perform CPR as soon as she was advised to by dispatch. However, her attempts were far too late as George was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, investigators questioned Sarah Boone venomously for hours following the arrival of the crime scene. Um, however, seeing no premeditation or motive to murder George, they did not immediately arrest Sarah Boone for his murder. And they believed at the time, thank you Linda, that it had been two adults, drunk, playing a game, and that perhaps her story had been true, that she'd passed out in some kind of drunken kind of haze. It wasn't until the day following when Boone was asked to come in for additional questioning and handed over her cell phone 
that police would find evidence that would make things take a turn. Now, Boone was asked to hand over her phone, to which she readily agreed to investigators, even citing certain videos that police investigators would, would see in her phone to back up claims that she made during um, her statement. Thank you for the ghost. So basically, Sarah Boone had started kind of telling the police that, that George was a very violent man and they were, their relationship was really volatile and they hadn't got along. And she said, look, look through my phone and you'll see that he's, you know, not a great person. Um, I know, yeah, Kev, that's what, um, that doesn't make sense, does it? Like, if you're playing hide and seek with someone, you're not going to zip them in the suitcase first and then go, oh, where did you hide? Like, that's what I do with my five-year-old when I can see her feet sticking out from like behind the sofa and I'm like, where is she? Is she upstairs? Like, you know, you know he's in the fucking suitcase. Now, investigators, however, did not need Boone's phone to corroborate her claims of vol like how volatile the relationship was as the couple had a long history with the police of arrests on both ends. Now, George has been arrested for domestic abuse before, so had Sarah. They both were drinkers, they both would get drink, uh, drunk, they would both argue, they would fight, neighbours had called the police before, um, and they had, they had literally been as bad as each other in this relationship. It was not the history of abuse that the pair of investigators were interested in, it was the inconsistencies between her statement, thank you Michelle, and the crime scene. The first inconsistency, the, uh, to speak, the first inconsistencies that investigators found was the coroner's investigation on George's body. The medical examiner found that Torres had several injuries, including scratches on his back, which Boone said that she had done during sex, contusions, bruising to various areas of his body, including his shoulders and his face. So he had a lot of bruises on his body and he had a cut to his lip. Now, Sarah Boone claimed to know nothing about the injuries and despite being the only person to have been with Torres the day and night before and the last person to see him alive, she could not provide investigators with any reasonable explanation as to where the injuries came from other than the scratch on his back, which she said were free sex. Given the couple's long history of abuse, Boone was immediately defensive regarding the contusions and cuts, stating that neither of them had laid a finger on each other that night. And she said, look, none of us have hit each other for about a month like we're doing better we had a really good day we were playing around we got drunk it was a giggle like it's one of the best days we've had so far so she's really kind of just distancing herself from any wrongdoing here now whether investigators believed or not hey Kay, regarding the injuries to torres is unclear but investigators were prepared to drop a bombshell on sarah boone now, the previous day, as, this, as at the scene, Boone had told investigators that George had willingly got into the suitcase and the pair were laughing and having a good time together. Big scoop. She reiterated at the time that Torres's entry into the suitcase was voluntary and nothing more than a game of hide and seek between adults. And when she went upstairs, she said, look, I assumed he could just get himself, it was Florida. I just assumed him that he could get himself out of the suitcase and she, he would come up to bed eventually and I must have passed out asleep. So she's already starting to change things a little bit. At first, she kind of says that she went upstairs and she was going to come back down and find him, but she forgot because she passed out. Um, and I don't know. We're going to talk about that in a minute, Bella. No spoilers, please. Um, which is really weird because why are you going upstairs for a minute in order to come back down and find him? You've just put him in the fucking suitcase. You zipped it up. You know where he was. It's just weird. And then she says like, oh, I knew he was still in there. But I just assumed he could get himself out. That's why I went to bed. I was waiting from the bedroom when I fell asleep. So she's, she's changing things a little bit already. She said, Boone um, said that she had had something to drink, but they both had their wits about them. It was a couple of drinks. They weren't stupidly drunk. They were giggly at the best. And, you know, that was it. Even getting defensive with authorities when questioned about the couple's drinking habits and whether or not Boone had passed out the night before due to her alcohol consumption. Boone responded she had consciously fallen asleep and the pair had only had a few glasses of wine amounting to about half a bottle between them. Investigators disputed this claim, citing a receipt from Publix Market on the date of the offence with two bottles of wine on the list. Search the crime scene found both of the bottles empty in the bin. So you're minimising everything, Sarah. Like you literally, you had two bottles of wine between the two of you. You both consent in adults. There's no problem with that. There is a problem, however when you start lying about how much you've had to drink because it looks like you're trying to hide something. 
Guys, if um, mods, if there are spoilers coming, just mute the comments. Thank you, Raven. <laughs> Even when confronted with damning evidence, Boone still denied having drunk, been drunk at the time and said that when George was put into the suitcase, they had only drunk half the bottle of wine. She doesn't know what happened to the other bottles of wine in the garbage. Investigators finally dropped the biggest piece of evidence they had against Sarah Boone. Her cell phone showed that about half a dozen times throughout the interview, um, what was I going to say then? Well, okay. Um, I wrote that down in a really weird way in my notes. So she had two videos on her phone, which totaled about 11 minutes of footage on the night this happened. Now, Boone did not remember filming this. So Sarah Boone did not remember having these videos on her phone. So she willingly give her phone to the police and she was thought she'd been quite clever. And she was like, look, look at this phone. Like it's gonna show you he wasn't very nice to me. We had a volatile relationship, but instead they found these two videos. So they're about 11 minutes long. And when they say to her, look, we found these videos on your phone. We want to play them. It's quite clear she does not remember these videos that she has been obliterated, uh, obliterated and drunk and she doesn't remember filming them. When they begin playing them, she says, no, 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 I can't handle it. I don't want to watch them. I don't want to watch them. Stop playing them. Like she is shocked that they have these videos. Investigators stoically informed her that if she did not watch the videos and give them an explanation for the footage, they would take the videos at face value, explain the videos they found with no explanation for them, make them look very bad and that she would look very bad if, if, she, if she didn't want to watch them. So she says she'll watch the videos with the police. Thank you for the ghost guys. Thank you for the heart mies. It took her a while to get through both videos, the full 11 minutes, because she keeps having to stop and she's hiding her head in her hand. She said, I don't want to watch them. So the videos completely contrast all of the claims that Boone had made up until this moment. In the videos, you see the suitcase of which you do not see a gap where Tora's fingers were sticking out as Boone had claimed, because she had told the police, look, he could get his fingers out of the suitcase. He could have unzipped it. Like, I don't know why he didn't. There's no gap on the zip of the suitcase. I'm going to show you a picture of the suitcase quickly. So this is the suitcase, and this is a still shot taken from one of the videos on her phone. The most, the most horrific part of the video is the audio that accompanies them. The video opens with Boone laughing. Now she is the only one laughing. He is inside the suitcase, he is panicking. She's laughing. Now you can hear Torres in the suitcase screaming, Sarah, 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 I can't breathe. Let me out, I can't breathe. And she responds, fuck you. And then he begins calling her name again and she is sat on the sofa and she says, that's my name, don't wear it out. And then he begins to plea more saying, look, Sarah, honestly, I cannot breathe. And she says, you can't breathe. That's how I feel when you choke me. I can't breathe either. That's how I feel when you cheat on me. I can't breathe, fuck you. At one point she responds to Torres crying for help, stating that he can't breathe with, then you should probably just shut the fuck up and save your breath. Boone can also be heard laughing at various times throughout the video as George begs Sarah to please help him. Now, despite the claims that she was not drunk when George entered the suitcase, you can tell in her voice that she had been drinking, she's slurring, and neither of them seemed to be having a great time as she claimed. Her voice is dripping with anger and callousness. Now faced with the video, um, she sticks to her story and she's like, well, we both found it funny. And they're like, look, there's only one person laughing and that's you, Sarah. And she's like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what you want me to say. Now when questioned as to why she didn't help George, despite him asking her over and over again, she responds that he was just crying wolf. So she didn't see the point in helping him. However, the video clearly shows Torres, Torres saying, babe, I'm serious. I can't breathe. I would die in here. Now, we're going to watch a bit of the video. Why can't I get full screen? Oh, full screen is unavailable, but. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. Stupid. Sarah. 
What's my name? Don't wear it up. I can't fucking breathe, babe. Seriously. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. I have to pause it for a minute because if I just play it all the way through it's not fair use policy and I'll get a warning again. Um, so what we think is that she said to him basically, it was not hide and seek, basically she said to George they were, they were drinking, they'd both been quite drunk, can you please get into the suitcase, I want to see if you fit in there and I want to do it up. I'm sure at some point people have done that in their families right where you just like brothers and sisters you're like you couldn't fit in there. Um, luckily for me I'm a fatty and I could never fit in any kind of suitcase, you try and find one you won't get me in one. Um, but he got in at one point and she zipped it up and then when he was struggling she refused to let him out of that suitcase. these videos go on for 11 minutes in total I mean they're long videos um, of which by the way his children will have to watch throughout the whole court process we'll have to see the whole videos with their father and you know they've been available online for some years now so throughout the interrogation Boone is constantly accused of the investigation she tells the investigators like you're just making assumptions you don't understand like this is just a game he's just crying wolf like he does this all the time like I've got no sympathy for him like honestly like he could have got out and he didn't get out She's clearly backed into a corner and using the accusations of investigators. Um, you know, she just says to him all the time, like, you don't know, you don't know. It's clear throughout the video that Boone thinks she's going home and has not recognised the magnitude of her actions. Like, you could, when you can see the whole police interrogation on YouTube, which I can't show it because I wouldn't go away with showing the whole video. Um, but she is very, very um, manipulative woman. She thinks she's very clever. She thinks she's more clever than the police. She thinks she can outwit them at all times. And she's almost like pissed off with being asked questions. She's kind of like, are you done? I'm ready to go home. Um, and they actually, they, they actually know at this point that they are going to arrest her, but she thinks she's going home. She's not asked. She's just like, she is very pissed off at being interviewed. Who's mandating this live? What does that mean, Anne? Who do you mean who's mandating it? Um, what kind of question is that? So investigators face her with a very serious question. Would you ever put Lucas in a suitcase and go upstairs to sleep? And Lucas is her young son from a previous relationship. Now she responds to this straight away. Um, does she mean mods? I don't know. Um, no one mandates me. Um, she literally says, no, I'd never do that. She said, I'd never do that to anyone. And they're like, well, you did. You did it to George. Now, faced with the evidence against her and the inconsistencies found in... Oh, who's running this live? It's a general question, Mum. Me, Mum. Hayley Comet. Um, how much is suitcase? <laughs> really grumpy. Um, I only realised what your mass, um, your mass debate um, account was. Um, yesterday I had seen it around for ages and it was only when someone read it out loud that I thought oh my god I didn't even realise that's what your name was I just read it that someone was having a mass debate um, yes so thank you for that grumpy <coughs> so she says no I would never do it to anyone now faced with the fact evidence against her and the inconsistencies found in her original story then she says actually I was really drunk like I don't remember none of this I was drunk and the police are like you've been saying the whole time you weren't drunk you had a half bottle of wine she's like no 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 I drank two bottles of wine and she's like I definitely was drunk now neighbours then come forward to police and say look she was drunk every night and even if George was not there she was kicking off about something like she is an absolute brute of a woman and even when her son's there she doesn't care like she's just a drunk hello Mrs JM 
Investigates confront Boone with the fact she'd previously denied being drunk, but now she's claiming the whole tragedy had occurred because of a result of alcohol. Boone implied that she thought, she, though she thought she was not drunk, now that she sees she had no recollection of the videos and all of this, like now um, she thinks it's affected her judgment. Now, how long is this take? I can't do it. Now, investigators um, actually then interview the property manager of the couple's townhouse where they live. Investigators brought the property manager of Boone's Winter um, Park townhouse, Melissa, and she definitely has a lot to say regarding the tumultuousness of the relationship between Boone and Torres. According to Melissa, she often saw bruises on Sarah Boone, but she had never seen any domestic markings on George Torres, though she saw Sarah much more often as she often came to her as a confidant. So Sarah would often go to people in the neighbourhood all, like, all the time, like the building manager and the person who managed her apartment, no problem grumpy, her neighbours, and she would always tell them all these really bad things about George, and she would be like, I am the victim, he is horrendous. But a lot of the neighbours said, look, we heard her shout, we heard her screaming, we saw him as well. His kids said he always had scratch on his face. I think this was a really volatile relationship as soon as alcohol was in the mix. But this is in Florida. Thanks, so. So Melissa confirmed... Boone's claims of abuse, however, she contradicted her uh, persistent claims of not being an alcoholic, saying that both George and Sarah were frequently, if not all the time, when she saw them drunk and would often be staggering around about 9am in the morning. This is a starkly different account from Boone's account of the pair's occasional drinking a couple of glasses of wine. When asked if Boone had ever referred to herself as an alcoholic, Melissa said no. Um, she always denied drinking and she would always try to hide things from people. Thank you, Andrew. The property manager also cited do dozens of other, um, I don't say winter gardens. Um, yeah, loads of other tenants had put in reports about this domestic abuse between the couple, saying things had been loud, they had always been shouting, fighting, furniture turned over, and a lot of the tenants were concerned about her young child who spent half its week in the house and what they were having to hear. Now, in a less informative interview, one of Boone's adjacent neighbours in an interview said that while he had a few interactions with Sarah and none with George, he could tell there was a domestic situation with the few kind of meetings he did have with Sarah Boone. When questioned about the night of the murder, he states he did not hear anything out of sorts other than a very loud boom that sounded like something falling down the stairs. And he said he'd never heard a noise like this before. Now, the reason we think that this loud boom occurred on the staircase is because it is believed that George was put in the, stair the, the suitcase upstairs. He was then wheeled to the top of the stairs and pushed down the flight of stairs, which accounts for all of the bruising on his body. So it is imagined that he had already been through great trauma in this small suitcase because he was pushed down the stairs, meaning that it caused lots of bruises. And if you can see, if you see the suitcase there, behind it is the stairs. So he is at the bottom of the stairs in this suitcase. Now, what we're going to do now, like she's obviously going to trial and her trial date has been rescheduled three different times. Her initial trial date was set to be April 2023, then rescheduled to July 2023. However, another, July, another delay had seen the trial pushed back again and it's just started now in October of 2023. The ability, uh, I can't even speak, the reason for the delays appears to be Boone's inability to keep the same counsel. So she keeps firing her counsel. Now in the three and a half years that she spent in custody, 3.3 years to be exact, she has had six attorneys and was just approved for her seventh. Now many say that the reason that she is constantly hiring Oh, 24, it's just started, Taz, thank you. Um, the last two dates were supposed to be 2023. Now, every time you get a new trial lawyer, obviously they have to go through all the paperwork, it puts back even further. She's now on her seventh. And it's believed because she's so manipulative, as soon as she gets counsel that are actually asking her questions or don't believe her full story from the word go, then she just wants someone else. Um, so it is in court at the moment. It is a murder case um, because it seemed premeditated murder, all right? She put him in the suitcase. People are saying, did she get him drunk beforehand, knowing this was going to happen? The suitcase was out ready and she was supposed to... I don't know how many can have she had to tell. They have to be approved for the judge, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's all being shown live on YouTube um, through Court TV, so you can watch it but on there. 
and I'm gonna Emily D Baker so I'm literally gonna like every now and again I'm gonna do updates on what's happening in the trial it might be every few days it might be every day depending on what kind of new, new evidence comes out um but she um she, she's she's looking at a long time she goes to prison do you know what I mean and then to me it looks like a premeditated murder even the fact you've got him in there you've pushed him down the stairs and you've sat there mocking him the whole time while he's telling you like I can't breathe I'm going to die um and she's she's continued on with this yeah of course cameras come court tv yeah i'm just waiting for this question we'll put the photos up and then um i'm gonna move on to a different case every day until it's over yeah the americans are really good at like showing their trials we just reached number 99 in the populace thank you guys the team gifts and the heartmeets really help um why are you obsessed with pens and markers how do you know that how do you know that that's really random how do you know i'm obsessed with pens and markers because i haven't even got any around me your wish list oh because do you know what it is um uh, mr khan i'll tell you um you know before i left domestic abuse um i had an art room yeah and i loved my art room and i had like loads of like scrapbooks and i had loads of pens and i wrote um i wrote um poetry and journals and i literally had like so many pens and posca pens and art pens and i really really i thought this kind of been in my house and i literally loved them and when i when i fled domestic abuse i lost all of my stuff like everything and i've replaced everything the girls have lost but i don't ever replace anything that i've lost because it just feels like the girls are more important and i literally was like where has she seen me um so I just, I really enjoy things like colouring, poetry, writing. Um, I've got a real thing for stationery. Um, and I just lost it all. I lost all my like scrapbooks I'd made. I lost all my photo scrapbooks I made of the kids. I lost all, everything. Um, so yeah, so when I made my wish list, I was trying to think of things I love. And it was like books and like bath stuff and like art stuff and like like journals and stuff like that. Um, just little things mean the most to me. And I've just, I just want to like be able to build them back up so I can do those things again. How? How did I lose them all? Because I, I fled domestic abuse in 2022 um, and I've only just moved out of refuge into my own home. Um, so I've bought all the furniture and stuff, carpets and stuff like that. Now it's just trying to put together all the little bits that I can never get back. No, it's gone for good. I lost everything. All my pictures of my dad and everything, but I just have to build it up. My wish list would just literally be the will to live. Ellie, don't say that. Don't say that. Oh my Jesus Christ, Ellie. Um, yeah, I, I just literally, I can't even think about um, the things I've lost now because it was in a storage lockup, which I paid for for the first six months. And then um, my ex's stuff was in there as well. So then we were um, through the courts, we were both supposed to pay. So I was supposed to pay, then he was supposed to pay. Um, and he just didn't pay and lost the storage lockup and didn't tell me till it was gone and it had been trashed, um, been thrown away, everything thrown away. Um, but don't make me cry. So yeah, it's not, um, the things like the kids first ever, um, like hospital boxes and, you know, my dad's last, my, uh, my dad's jumper that I took after he died and my last birthday cards for my dad, like those things, like just are hard. But the rest of it, like material stuff, like the furniture and stuff doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but it's just all those little bits, but you can't take it with you, can you? Um, yeah. You well panicked me then. I thought, why does she know? Like, how does she know about that I like markers? Because I haven't even got any around me. I think I've got about four pens in my life now. Um, I think I've got like four pens. So I was thinking, how does she even know? <laughs> so now I just want to start doing things like that again and I want to be able to replace the photo books with the kids and kind of, like, I need marker pens and stuff to do it. Like I made them really cool books and stuff and I'll print off all the photos I've got online, like on Facebook and stuff like that and get some of my family's um, and just try and put it together again. Thanks, Baz. So this is Sarah Boone. This is the kind of faces that she pulls in. You can't buy safety, can you, in peace? And I've got peace now. These are the kind of faces she pulled in court, right? Hey, can you tell me how much you earn a month on TikTok? Um, absolutely. Bloody not, you nosy bastard. On your no followers and no thing coming in here to ask me how much I earn. Um, yeah. So this is her kind of face she pulls. Now, one thing I found really, really bizarre is her first um, court appearance was um, this week, obviously, and she put in an application through the court, right, to have professional hair and makeup done. 
like to actually actually have a makeup artist come in and have her makeup done right and she the court said no but you can let your um tell uh, Tenerife Thompson I make 50 grand a week I make enough to pay my rent it's like a full-time job in it so I don't get anything else um yeah so she um she literally um he said no you can get your defense team i give them permission to put makeup for you before the trial every day um but you can't have professionals like salon star come in what a cheeky bitch mum. this is her and have snacks bought in yeah she's thinking it's like a some kind of movie trial going on and this is george the victim and he has got two grown-up children um yeah no i saw um i saw a video of zach the other day saying that every time i made a video that was a million views i would get 300 pound and that's not true either like my one of diddy which made eight million views i got a tenner for a tenner so literally whatever people are getting these numbers from um it's mad like absolute mad it goes up and down all the time Hayley, have you got any have you got sinusitis no i don't um <laughs> why do i sound like i have I swear to God, people coming in—they literally, um, <laughs> they literally. Um, I love. Say, yeah, that's fine, Ella. Do you want to know what size pants as well? I am massive. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know what's going on tonight. People want to know all my business. I don't even have sinusitis, and people are like literally just like don't diagnose me left, right, and centre. Hey, Jenny. Oh, Lenny. Sorry, Lenny. I literally you were off side if anyone wants to know if my doors aren't on as well i still haven't i still haven't got a circular saw to put them back on yeah i believe he had a son and a daughter and i think they're like adults i know my blood type i don't know what my blood type is to be had to give it a i will be in smaller pants soon hopefully slay sagas i don't know if people have lost their, lost their mind um I don't think anyone ever has. Look at Laurie Fallow. She was like melting down cr crayons and like colouring her lips and stuff and going into court. She looked a right nightmare. My blood type is cake. Jesus Christ. Um, no, the carpets, the carpet in the front room is like luxury carpet. So the doors didn't fit on afterwards. I think you need to like take about 15 mil off the bottom. That's what the guy said to me. I had no idea what he's on about. And I thought, you're the carpet there. Can't you just quickly do it? Um, but I just imagine if I try to do it myself, I'm going to cut off one of my fingers. So I'll have to wait. I am doing another case tonight, Lauren. We're going to do two um, old cold cases um, inside leg measurement. I don't know. I can't measure. My thighs are stuck together. Literally. They're mahusive. Um, doors need planing, yeah, but I don't have a planer. Just order something for your wishes. Oh, thank you, Lisa, so much. Thank you so much. I need planing. Hire a handyman. What for my TikTok riches? Yeah, I do need to. I really want to put them back on. It's annoying when I'm live at night as well. Thank you for subscribing because um, there's two doors in the front room. There's one there that goes out to the hallway and there's one there that goes out to the kitchen and they're both off. What did I weigh at birth? I think I was about 17 stone. <laughs> Mr. Chocolate is like, um, he's too busy playing Fortnite right now. Hello.